Hi there, this is Maher here again. So in uh, this uh, lecture, I'm going to show you how you can connect to the Mikrotik router using SSH, but this time we are not going to use password. We are going to use the keys. So uh, something we can do it that we can connect to the Mikrotik router again, only on SSH in case we don't want to use passwords, but we only want to use keys to be able to log into the Mikrotech router. So what are the keys and how this can be done? That's something I'm going to explain it in this lecture. Let's go now to explain to you what is the lab scenario and what we need to do. Then we start doing the points. So I'm still on the same lab scenario. What I need to do, or let's say what we used to do before. So in our previous lecture, if you remember uh, one of our previous lectures, we have uh, downloaded the software, which is uh, Putty. And then on the putty, what we did, we just connect to the Mikrotik using Telnet or SSH as well. And uh, we had to put the username and the password. Now, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to put the password. What I want to do is just to use the keys, meaning that every time I don't want to just write the password for every single time I want to connect SSH to the Mikrotik. So what we can do, we can create from the uh, software that I'm going to install it in a moment, which is Putty. We are going to create two keys. We have the public key and the private key. So what are those keys? Those are some keys that are being created that one can open the other. So they only work together. And uh, what we are going to do, we are going to put the private key because this is private. So meaning shouldn't be exposed to anyone. So we put it on our computer and the public key, we put it on the Mikrotik router. So we have to export it to the Mikrotik router or let's say to put it in the Mikrotik router and then to import it to be used for the SSH for the user that we want to work on. Then as the public key is on the Mikrotik router and the private key is on the computer, I'm going again to use the software, which is Putty. And I'm going to put in putty instead of putting the password, I'm going to put the private key when I want to do the session to the Mikrotik router using SSH. Then the Mikrotik router over here will ask for the username. You put the username and then he will check, oh, you have this private key. I have a public key here. They work together so one can open the other and then you can gain access to the Mikrotik again on SSH. So that's what we are going to do in this lecture. Let's go now to the points and start doing them. Point number one, download Putty package from putty.org and install it on your PC. So that's something we have done, something similar to it in one of the previous lectures. But now I want to go and search for Putty. So a lot of people say that is Putty or Putty, how to pronounce it. I made some research about it and it should be pronounce it as putty. So uh, then we have to say putty and net putty. Anyway, whatever the, the word you use it. So it's just the software that we are going to download. And uh, I have checked that also, uh, it's not anymore uh, the uh, URL putty.org. It's something different. And then when we go to download, you can see it's called now something else, the domain. So this is a very nice uh, software that you can download. We downloaded previously the binary file, which was that one. Now we have to download the package file because we want to be able to generate the keys. Now, if you are using Mac OS or Linux, then I think that you can, without using the software Putty, you can generate the keys, the public and private keys from those operating systems. But on Windows, you cannot do that. So I'm going to use the software Putty. Now, I'm going to download it. So this has been downloaded. And now all we need to do is just to install it. So it's just a matter of next, next. And this normally is going to be installed in a moment. And uh, once installed, then we can start doing the next step, which is to make the uh, keys available. Point number one is done. Point number two, uh, open uh, putty key generator and click generate. So I forget to put for you the picture. Now, if you go to Windows, you can see that you have something called putty gen. So that's something which is the putty generator. All you need to do is just to click on it. You can see it from the uh, run. 
Now, what I need to do is just to generate a public and private key. So I can just say generate. And now look what they're saying here. This is funny. Please generate some uh, randomized by moving the mouse over the blank area. So normally, if you don't move the mouse, if we leave it like this, you see it doesn't work. And I <laughs> was waiting for some time and said, ah, it's frozen. But actually, you need to move the mouse. So this works. So you can see I'm moving the mouse over here. And this is now done. Point number two is done. Point number three, save the private key on a folder. So now we go back to here and we can see, let's move that one. Then we can see indeed that we do have right now two keys. So we have, this is over here, the, the public key, all what you see here, that's the public. And then you have here a private key. The private key is not shown because this should be private. So what we are going to do now is just to save the private key. This is something we need to save it on our computer. So I'm going to click on save and I was going to say yes. I see that we had an old key. So I'm going to delete that one and we save it inside document and that key. I made a folder for that. So I'm going to use the name private key and then I'm going to say here. OK, so now in the document, let's check again. If I go to documents, so this is the document and we have your key. I can see I have this private key that is also, I was testing it myself, so I let me delete it. So we have this private key that we have just saved it and we keep it inside our uh, folder, which is called key. Point number three is done. So we have now the private key. We need to get the public key. Copy the string and paste it into the notepad. Which string they are talking about? The string which we got it here, which is the public key. So you just make right click, select all, and then when you select everything, you just make copy for it, and then you open a notepad. So just uh, a notepad file. So this is the notepad, we, and then we just paste it over here. So this is my public key. Now we need to save it into another extension, and I'm going to show you that in the upcoming point. Point number four is done. Point number five, rename the file to pubkey.pub. So now the name of the file can be anything. So I just said pubkey, so it's public key. You can name it whatever you want. But the extension should be .pub. If you don't have the extension .pub, this will not work. So we go here, and now I'm going to say save as and we put it also inside the documents key. Perfect. Now we call it pop key and dot pop. Now be careful. We have to save as type and here we have to say all file. Otherwise it will be saved as txt. So this is what I need to do. And then I'm going to say save. Now if I go back to the folder of the key, we can see it. It's showing up over here. And to be sure that the extension is the right one. So what we can do, we can go from here to properties. And on general, we can see this is type file publisher the document that's 16 dot pop. So that is perfect. That is what I want to see. Point number five is done. So now we have the private key, which is on my computer and the public key on my computer. Now, the idea is that we want to put the public key on the uh, Mycotech router because then we are able to use the combination of the public and private key when we want to do the SSH connection. So now we need to open the Winbox and copy the public key to router one. So this is my router. This is router one is there. All I need to do is just to move it a little bit like this. We go to the folder and I'm going to take again the public key and not the private key. Put it over here on the Mycotech router. Now if we go to the files, we can see the public key is there, but this is not yet on the SSH. It's just a file inside the hard drive of the Mycotech router. Point number six is done. Point number seven, now we need to import it uh, to the Mycotech router, meaning we have to say that this uh, public key is going to be used on the Mycotech router whenever someone is trying to do SSH to us. So let's do that. So now we have to go to the system and we go to users. So we can see that from the last lab, I do have some accounts here. Let's say that we want to use it on the admin account. You can put it on any account you want, but I'm going to use it for the admin account. So we have to go here to the SSH key. And uh, over here, you say import SSH key. And then it says on which user. So you can see we can select which user we want. As I said, I'm going to use it on the admin account. 
on the key file we just select the key that we want to import it for that user the passphrase what is the passphrase over here passphrase that's something on the uh, uh, putty generator you could here put some passphrase to make some security so when you want to import the key to the microtech router then you have to repeat that passphrase i didn't do that but if you just put the passphrase here to have some more security then the same passphrase you have to write it here all right so now nothing here and then you know you don't need to put anything and then you say import ssh key so now this SSH key has been imported to the Microtech router and now we can try to do SSH to see if it's gonna work with the keys. Fault number seven is done. Fault number eight, open Putty and try to make SSH connection to router one using the private key, without using the private key, without using it. Does it work? So we want to try now to go to Putty. So this is the Putty software. And I'm going to try to connect to the Microtech router on SSH without I use a key. So this is the IP of the Microtech, this is port 22, which is SSH. And then I'm going to say open. So it takes me to here, to the username and password. So I'm going to say admin, this is the account I want to connect to. And then the password 123456. So that is the right password of the admin. And look, guys, even though that I'm putting the right password, you are not able to log in. And this will never be able to log in. The reason why is because we said on the Microtech router that anyone who wants to connect to us as SSH, he has to have a key as SSH as admin also. We just put it for the admin account. So you can see it's not working. Now we have to see how to solve the problem. Point number eight is done. Point number nine, open Putty and try to make SSH connection using the private key. Does it work? Let's try. So I'm going to go to Putty again. And now what I want to do is just to go to 192.168.88.1. Perfect. So now this is with SSH. Now what you need to do to say we're gonna use the, uh, um, over here, this is the credential we just say here that is the private key that i'm going to use it yeah so now we have private key here and we have this session uh, what we can do we can save that one so for example router one we just save it with the key the private key so we can use it in the future so let's say save now we just say open and now it takes me to the login as admin. And here we go. We didn't ask or get asked to put the password because it used the key. So what you can also do if you want. So let me just uh, close that one and uh, open another one. So that's something very handy that you can do. And uh, over here, you can write admin at 192.168.88.1. And then over here, uh, we go to SSH to authentication credential. We put that is the private key. And now I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to rename it to over to save over the other one so save it so meaning what we're doing now is that we are saying that i'm going to send with the ssh i'm going to send the username sending the username with the ssh so it sends the username it has the private key on it so uh, that means that it will log me directly and now i'm gonna say open here we go you can see i just logged in directly so it sent the username and it used the key as authentication and it logged me directly so why i saved this session because it's very handy for the future if you want to connect to router one you just come here and then double click and here we go you could enter to the mic router right away point number nine is done point number ten right on terminal ip ssh print then enable uh, always allow password login so what is that so that's something 
Um, I can say that it was on version 6 on the command line, but now it is on Winbox itself. But uh, let me just show you. If you say IPSSH print, you have something here called always allow password login and it is disabled by default. That was not possible on the version uh, 6 uh, to see it from Winbox. You have to do it from the command line, but on version 7, it's there already. So we can uh, make it uh, uh, on or off so we can do it from here. So what does this do for me? This does is that in case I forget to uh, add the, the key, the private key when I'm doing the SSH connection to the microcrater or I've uh, lost it somehow, whatever it happens. So I'm doing a backup like to allow also to connect to the microcrater via SSH using the password. So when you say always allow password login, meaning that the key will work, but also the password will work as well. Point number 10 is done. Point number 11, try to log in via SSH using the key and without the key. So let's do that. First, let's try with the key because we have it saved here. So this is saved. We just double click and I can see that uh, with uh, the key, let me move it here. So this is working. So we could directly log in. What about now without using the key? So I'm going to open Putty again. And we go here and I'm going to say 192.168.88.1. And I'm not going to put any key. So I'm doing a new connection. So you can see there is nothing here as a key. And I'm going to say open. It will ask me for the username. It is admin password one two three four five six enter here we go so i can also log in using the username and the password point number 11 is done and uh, finally we have to disable that settings that we have enabled to allow to connect using the password and try now again with the key and without the key and check if it's gonna work perfect so we go back to here we go to ip ssh and we disable that one now we go to the putty again and we go here we connect using the key it should work and indeed it is working so i have it here now i'm going to go to putty one more time and i'm going to connect to the microsoft router without using the key and normally we said that it shouldn't work because we said that only using the key can be connected. So now I'm going to say here open. It will ask me for username and password. Admin password 123456 access denied. So you can see it is not working. So that's the setting that you can normally I would prefer to keep it enabled as a backup in case you have any problem with your keys then you can always connect using password point number 12 is done and uh, with this point i have showed you a very nice lab about uh, the uh, private and public keys that you can generate from the putty software and uh, it is used to be able to connect to ssh on the micro creator without using the password so you use rather the keys so i have showed you how you can generate them how you can uh, put them on the computer and on the router. And then we have to also tried if it's working and it was working. Then finally, we have the option to also allow the uh, request for SSH to come um, without uh, the keys and to be able to use the password. And uh, we have an option to enable that and we have enabled it and we show it is working perfectly. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.